Hey everyone, we have Richa Maheshwari here. She is uh, the owner of the Kids Jewelry brand, Pinura with Richa. She's also the winner of KSP Hi. Best Kids Jewelry Award for 2022 mm -hmm. and uh, has a series of products uh, that is uh, in, in gold, silver, and brass for kids accessories. So, uh, welcome, Richa, and thanks a lot for joining me uh, in this endeavor. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, we would also, uh, you know, we would like to delve deep into your entrepreneurship journey. Uh, what inspired you to get started in this uh, venture and uh, what is it that kept you going? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so basically, I started uh, Finora in 2013. Um, okay. I always used to love jewelry. So uh, my background is actually finance. I've done my MBA and uh, bachelor's, everything in finance. But oh, okay. uh, I was always inclined uh, towards the creative aspect. And I used to love jewelry. So I somehow wanted to get into it. Um, then okay. uh, after my MBA, I started a finance job. But uh, I left it in like six, eight months. And uh, I started Finora. So Finora okay. was uh, started on a very, very small level. It is uh, bootstrapped. Okay. So um, the was also very low. We started with a single carrier at home. And uh, he used to come. I used to design the sketches at home and then give it to that person to make it and stuff. That's how we started it from, honestly, from our room. But okay. uh, now we have ventured into uh, kids' jewelry on a bigger level. Now we export okay. also. And uh, now we do a lot of shows, Pan India. We are into wholesale also. We have our own website. We are on Amazon, Flipkart, and various platforms. So okay. uh, it took some time to grow it. But right. uh, yeah, uh, nice. we love it. So <laughs> growing nice. step by step. Amazing. Yes. So, Richa, uh, you mentioned that you were in a job, finance job, and then uh, you ventured into entrepreneurship. So, what is it that, uh, you know, made you think that I should probably uh, eventually self employed in entrepreneurship? So, honestly, um, I belong from a business background. Like, my dad okay. uh, is a business. So, I've always seen that culture of uh, starting, okay. um, you know, your own work and then growing it. And even he started from scratch. So, okay. he was also like, uh, um, he was always very motivating that okay. uh, you should do something on your own. Like, okay. I studied also uh, in business and finance. So, my ultimate goal was to do something of my own, but I wasn't clear of okay. how to you know actually become an entrepreneur and how to make your own firm and then grow with people and do all right. that so uh, working um, in a corporate uh, structure obviously helped a lot uh, okay. got to know different dynamics of how it works and everything but okay. uh, eventually it was just the whole passion of doing something on your own uh, made me get into okay. entrepreneurship and then, um, started something very small I didn't even think that you know uh, it could actually mold or something okay. so uh, ultimately it was just uh, slowly slowly we kept on growing so yeah that was the okay. entire entrepreneur process and the urge of doing business on our own got it so it's like you see your yeah. father uh, you know doing business and you you said he's also supporting and motivating you to do uh, something on your own. Yeah, uh, honestly, the motivation that uh, got me into it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So when you started, uh, did you have any challenges in terms of how the finances would pan out, or you were like, uh, you know, this this is definitely going to work. You had the conviction that it's going to work. How how did you feel about uh, being in the entrepreneurship journey, especially in the first few months? first few months you are just big you're just like you know honestly it's just like a, a big sea and you're just swimming you're just like surviving just like keep swimming but right. um, a lot of challenges the so finance part is uh, 
the major one because uh, you know every whatever you study in your entire journey everything is very um, bookish is what we study you know when we practically do it then right. you actually get to know of how the finances work and right. clearly like right after college when you go to corporate then you are not handling the finances you are just doing right. a very small part in the company and right. now when you become an entrepreneur you are handling the entire finance and um, right. so yeah like you learn i think you learn from your losses you learn from uh, doing wrong things and mean i think what helped me was the guidance the okay. people the right people around you know okay. you should have the right people around to guide you when you're at least doing something wrong right. and then eventually um, slowly you get to understand how the entire process works mainly okay. i learned from my losses the first two years was uh, yeah quite a struggle got it okay okay so it's, it's like you uh, fall and then you learn from it and then you do better better every time slowly you you're just building up on your experiences and, and knowledge and uh, doing better every it's at every exactly. like i feel you have to fall to you know get up it's right. like very um, philosophical if you look at it but yeah. Uh, yeah that's what happens like um, when honestly when i started the first person on board in my team my karigar um he had no idea he was always uh, making silver and uh, gold jewelry so to call him and to tell him that i don't want to silver and gold because i started with uh, adults jewelry so i was like i want to start with uh, artificial brass jewelry with gold plating and his first reaction is like ye kon kharidta hai who is going to buy it so i am like you know this is back in 2013 also oh okay. so uh, you know it's it it was a very gradual change a learning change right. lot of testing lot of sampling um, so yeah it's it's a very slow process Got i think it. becoming an entrepreneur is so uh, all the more difficult because all the risk are on you all the losses are on you and plus when right. you hire people you have yeah. this additional responsibility to do something right. better because they are also dependent on you and right. more than dependent it's something like they also want to grow with you it's not like right. only you are growing eventually right. they should uh, the whole interest of working with you to grow with you right. so it. you know it's it's a lot of things that go in your mind while doing it you doubt yourself you do like there are a lot of questions eventually it's uh, it, it goes on yeah right. so so when you hired a team uh, you said you you added a little more responsibility in terms of uh, giving them salaries and also attending to their growth uh, but how did the exactly. uh, how did the fit assessment happen like did you say uh, this is this is the person i want and then you started looking uh, someone who has the skills and attributes or is it someone from your within the network that you thought could be a valuation to your team how did that hiring process go for you so hiring um, honestly when i started it i didn't have like a lot of criteria uh, for a person uh, okay. whom i have to hire i obviously wanted people who know how to do their job but uh, okay. eventually when you're hiring and i was very young like when i started the uh, senora mm -hmm. i was uh, 23 years old so oh. uh, you know you don't yeah like it's long back now you think about it but uh, 23 you're so fresh in your mind you just have ideas coming right. in your mind okay and uh, you just know that i want these these people to get the work done so you hire people according to their skill set but then you i don't like now i can say i can evaluate the skills i can you know i can take interviews and then hire people accordingly but that time it was like you know okay acha you know this job you know how to make this jewelry so let's get on board you do some sampling so okay. uh, there a lot of process like there's a person who makes a design on computer we just sketch it like i used to sketch it on my own so i used to give like rough sketches a person who makes it on computer for you so you okay. know 
he made some five samples for me and i was like okay yeah this person can do the job is able to comprehend at least whatever i'm telling him to do then right. the other person who you know make looking at that uh, computer design uh, so eventually it was just a sampling it's a very hit and trial method i feel in the beginning because okay. uh, you don't have much to evaluate the skill set also on because you know you don't know okay i, I you just need that skill in that person but you can't right. uh, that entire stressful hiring process i think ha happens when you get once you get to a particular stage got it got it okay so yeah. when you when, when you were like uh, trying to find a client uh, maybe the first client or the first few clients how did you uh, find them what was the your strategy is that something that you found within your network or within your trusted circle so eventually we started only with retail um, okay. so the retail sales i think for me uh, started uh, we started marketing on social media that time facebook uh, was at boom okay. so uh, 2013 we just started with the facebook page okay. and uh, then uh, started getting queries we had photo shoots done so we started uploading it okay. but i think the first um, like actual customer what you can say was friends and family right. and then gradually it uh, it was like a word of mouth okay. then we started uh, with like these small lifestyle shows uh, okay. small pop ups where we displayed our collection and then slowly we started building a uh, customer base like i'm from jaipur so um, right. it's a small city so slowly yeah. the entire uh, word of mouth obviously travels and uh, right. we first started doing shows only in our city and okay. on social media platforms that was our entire networking uh, strategy that time and then later we had like ads and you know slowly you start with the entire marketing process okay okay got it yeah. so uh, when you say uh, it started word of mouth and you uh, attended to the clients better uh within your uh, family and friends so how did the unique yeah. selling proposition uh, framework work out for you did you say that uh, I, th these are some things that competitors are not doing and let's try to uh, bring that in our product or service is that something that you looked at um see eventually um when you start you obviously face criticisms also but i yeah. feel that's a good um, any form of criticism uh, works in your favor that time because you know right. what is testing in the market but yeah. uh, we started designing uh, with things which uh, see i was young that time so i was uh, actually making jewelry catering to a particular age group like we were targeting also 20 to 40 age bracket so okay. uh, we started designing jewelry according to them so okay. uh, in each category we launched like five designs each just to test how it is going with different colors and stuff and then eventually when we started getting feedback we got to know what people are wanting like how what do right. what, what what they are liking how they are liking so uh, that's how the entire uh, you know uh, the entire process of uh, conversions started happening but um, honestly if you look at it uh, when i started that was all uh, the adult jewelry but in 2019 when we started with kids jewelry that okay. was that that was actually my main growing phase because uh, absolutely no one was doing kids jewelry like there hardly like in india if you look at it now there are a lot of players but when we started in 2013 there were only like three four brands which you can say probably on tips who were doing kids jewelry so that okay. was my main usp that it's a very okay. untapped market okay. and no matter if you have like you know any kind of recession or anything you will buy for your kids like you know it's it's something that you people don't compromise on so we started uh, kids jewelry with the main usp that you know there are not much of players there not much of competition plus you know uh, because my child was young that time i know what kids like they like to wear their favorite characters and stuff so we started playing on that and that's okay. how you know it became like a big thing because 
everyone was like oh my god kids jewelry they are all the favorite characters of all the kids and you know kids getting excited looking at it that entire smile and that whole excitement is what like you know kept us okay. going and we were like okay this is the market so we completely okay. shifted now we are not doing adults at all we are doing only okay. kids so now so uh, if you look at in india there are not many people doing it okay so that's a good thing because you know you eventually started start getting recognized fast okay so you are saying that if you yeah. identify a specific niche uh, then you you have more chances of success than like get into the entire market exactly. if you have a niche market see i think for a mass targeting uh, your product has to be very solid to go okay. for a mass targeting Right. and uh, i'm not saying for a niche market you don't need a product to be solid but for a niche marketing i think to penetrate in the market gets little easier you okay. have a little bit of upper hand in penetrating a niche market because okay. then you know you can decide the rules you can say what is happening you can introduce new things it's more experimental there right okay got okay. it so uh, like identifying your niche and then uh, so we're saying your customers well getting word of mouth uh, recognition and marketing as well so what are the strategies help you scale to where you are right now so we have a social media team who is okay. handling our uh, all social media handles earlier we had a in house team doing it but uh, we realized with this market right now social media is the main platform to grow your business like instagram is a rage now instagram right. influencer marketing it they've become like one of the key marketing uh, aspects if you look at it right. so we have a in house social media team who take okay. uh, they actually take care of all our social media handles they take care of our website so we have our own website through which we sell okay. then we have a lot of things like you know now you have to target google ads seos Right. search engine optimization becomes a very uh, important factor if you want to run your own website because your website is uh, at least my website is running on a particular uh, single category which is kids okay. jewelry it doesn't have a lot of categories to attract a lot of customers as okay. in like you know uh, it's not like a uh one umbrella shop where you feel like you know you have clothes also you have shoes also you have jewelry also it's only jewelry and that also only kids oriented okay. so you know to get the customer to get that traffic on your website your main uh, key the main uh, role is of social media so you can divert the traffic through instagram through google ads uh via facebook ads we yeah we do a lot of social media rigorous marketing to get okay. our website up and running because once you divert the traffic it's all about how you retain that customer how you follow up on that customer how you start doing your email marketing because eventually with your website if a person uh, is coming and stopping on your website you can have your database very strong and once you have a strong database then you can uh, deep market to those customers even if they are not buying that time you can okay. uh, tap the remarketing aspect to Got it. it amazing point uh, I, for, I, yeah, I think the database is just like a gold mine of uh, you know uh, wealth it is it is totally yeah. so right. uh, when we do shows also pan india we do shows in various cities delhi bangalore okay. lot of places our okay. main uh, focus is if a customer is coming and stopping at our booth we need to write the contact details the email so that later on even if they are not right. buying that time you need Got to it. get your database so strong because eventually for all your uh, marketing purpose for everything to tap them again to remind them that yeah you know they've seen this particular product at this particular exhibition or they right. visited that website they that whole thing has to pop up in front of them again and again to remind them so that's right. a very uh, main uh, what how can i don't know it's a very important factor i feel database okay. is all it runs on nowadays right right so uh, do you pay yeah. uh, do you do video based uh, content on instagram and facebook or you also have like text based uh, content or books ebooks uh, 
uploaded on social media? Uh, we don't have ebooks, so we do have our catalogs on LinkedIn and stuff. Okay. But uh, these with kids wearing it, like um, because it's a kids jewelry brand, so we want more of kids to be featured. So we have kids right. of all ages or on our uh, Instagram page wearing okay. so video content in form of reels makes it very right. attractive because um, you know that's how that's what is working now people want okay. to see like they just don't want to see the product they want to see how that product is looking on a particular child you know right. how comfortable is the child wearing it so okay. uh, our main focus in making reels and video content is the happiness on the child's face wearing our jewelry you know like how their entire face lights up with all our cute characters and something that they right. love Okay. That's what we target on in video content. That oh. uh, more than the product, the child should look uh, happy and, you know, you know they should the be satisfied. Right. The testimonials and, and the satisfaction in the uh, ch children is, is what, you know, gives you more. Is what is more important. Yes. Right. How to light up their faces. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing inputs, Richa. So uh, I I think I've got a lot of valuable insights and information from you and your own personal journey. Uh, and uh, yeah. really delighted to be talking to you uh, this evening. Oh, it was lovely talking to you. You're doing Thanks. great work, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Richa. Thank you. Uh, any yeah. closing comments that you want to make uh, for budding entrepreneurs uh, who is watching this channel? Um, I, I, I don't know. There's just like one particular line, which I feel is always running in my mind is okay. uh, keep swimming. like, don't give up, just keep doing it. Even if it's, uh, everything is going wrong because eventually in the beginning, everything goes wrong. I don't think anything goes right because, uh, you're just right. like, you know, you're all over the place with everything. Okay. But uh, the key is to sustain, like, you know, if okay. you, you feel strong about your product, you feel it's going to work, then I right. um, think it will work. That is what I feel because, you know, even though I started with like a product, which was completely new, like okay. I had so many questions, will it even work? But like, you know, that whole zest of like, no, it will work. Yeah, I have to make it work is okay. what is going to keep it going. So yeah, work hard, keep swimming, keep experimenting and stay updated is, you know, with today's time, you have to mold that entire uh, entrepreneurship, everything what you've read, right. everything goes uh, in vain, I feel, because uh, okay. times are changing. You have to be very updated with what is happening right now, what will work right now, how okay. it, it's not only having a strong product, it's how you present that strong product to the market is uh, right. what make it happen. So okay. yeah, keep swimming. <laughs> oh, yes, amazing closing uh, uh, comments. I think you mentioned a lot of good points. And uh, the one that you mentioned where uh, confidence is key because you have to have the faith in the, within yourself even when things are not going your way, your way and then just keep doing it uh, without giving up. And I think that's how uh, successful entrepreneurs are made. Yes. Thank yes. You. I don't know how to define successful entrepreneurship. <laughs> but uh, yeah, because uh, I don't think an entrepreneur is ever satisfied. They always doubt right, exactly. if they are doing good. But yeah, it, 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 you're going to get there. Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely love the spirit of, of entrepreneurs because I think uh, it, it needs a different kind of mindset, uh, which is uh, you know, very rare in, in people. So I think uh, I really admire entrepreneurship and, and the people who venture into something new and unknown. Uh, and then make make that work uh, irrespective of the odds. So, thank you so much for your time, which I, I really appreciate it. And I'll thank back you to so much. It was yeah. lovely talking to you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.